Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. In today's Question the Narrative video, I want to explore some possible mud flood window explanations that people have been leaving for me in the comments. And since windows aren't really something that I've ever researched, I, I don't know many people that would research windows, um, it's something that I'm certainly not going to claim to be an authority on anything. So if, if they have options for what could be the explanation for mud flood windows, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to look into that. That's what the whole point of questioning things is that you have to look things from all sides, even if it's something that is, you know, ends up being something more mundane or something um, opposite of what you actually originally thought that it was. So the first um, thing that people have been telling me that the mud flood windows are, are coal chutes. And right here is a picture of a coal chute. I took this in from a house in my neighborhood. Um, well, I took the photo. I didn't take the coal chute from the house. I took this photo, though, in my neighborhood. So, yeah, I have seen houses with coal chutes. I actually used to live in a house with a coal chute because we had coal heating. And um, now around here, I don't know where how it is everywhere, but the coal chutes are typically smaller than your average window. But again, it, it could be be different depending on, you know, where you live, what the architecture is like and so on. And so I, I understand that a lot of times maybe what we are looking at as possible mud flood windows may be coal chutes. However, I did have someone um, comment and they were kind of condescending, called me Deary or Hun or something like that and said, all these mud flood windows are just coal chutes. And that, that I do have to differ with because not all of the mud flood windows are coal chutes. And the reason that I say that not all mud flood windows are coal chutes is because there is no good reason why any one building would need between 12 and 16 or possibly even more coal chutes. So I took these photos. Um, I actually showed, this was from a video that, that I did a couple weeks ago. And these are some windows in what was an old factory. And these, I'm, I assure you, are not coal chutes. These are also are not coal chutes. And as you can see, they actually have the same shape as the windows above them. They are just much shorter. So what I postulated in the other video was that I'm, I'm thinking that the rest of these windows is likely underground. And again, I'm going to say it, they are not coal chutes. We, we don't need multiple coal chutes on any building, just like this is the municipal building. And again, these, the, no, these were not used for coal. So I think that while, again, I will, I will admit that some of the windows that we're looking at could very well be coal chutes, that is not going to be a catch-all answer for all mud flood windows, as one commenter point, tried, to, tried to point out. Now, another reason that people said that there are what they call basement windows is to let in light. And for sure, I will tell you that, yes, there are some basement windows that are built to let in light. And you can usually see the difference between houses that are built with basement windows for light and those what what we would call mud flood windows. For example, this is again, this is another building near my house. And as you can see, the glass is right up to the sidewalk and I'm not, you know, I'm not a builder, so I don't really know anything about architecture. I don't know anything about construction. I'm not going to pretend to. However, um, I believe it might have been on Streets of Tartaria how he was talking that, talking about that if you would have something like this, glass right up to street level like this, this is inviting in a lot of moisture into the house, especially if you live in a climate where there's a lot of snow, which we do get a lot of snow here in Pennsylvania. And he said, it's not something that a builder would intentionally do. And forgive me if it wasn't Streets of Tartaria that said it, but I believe that it was. So I even went back there today and I just videoed again, I recorded again, just showing what I'm calling mud flood windows on this building. And you will see that some of them are kind of plastered up. You will see that the brick is different on the bottom than above it. There's the glass straight up to the sidewalk. And again, this isn't really something that seems to make sense when someone would be building a house. 
And even if you would say, well, maybe when they put the sidewalks in, maybe they, they just covered up, you know, part of the window, that would be a lot of the building to be cutting off. Now, see right here, they did try to put concrete or something around that one, but that for them to cover up that much of a building when putting in a sidewalk, I just want to point this out. I just want to finish saying what I was saying. I don't think that the that the homeowners or the builders would have been very happy about that to have that much of a window chopped off or that much of the building chopped off just to put a sidewalk in. Now here what I was showing you was that so we had all these mud flood windows down here and what typically happens with the mud flood windows is that you will then have to go up a few steps to get up into what is now the first floor but what may have once been the second floor and that is exactly what happens here. So you have to go up a few steps, a couple steps, and then you have, once again, this old world style, ginormous door with the arch at the top. I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah, it had the arch at the top and it was just enormous. And again, you have to go up a couple, a couple steps to get there and see, there you go. And so a lot of times, yeah, there really are a lot of what we will call anomalies or even similarities that, that these buildings seem to have. So as you can see here on this photo, these windows were also not built for light because this line here is where the sidewalk once was. They, they removed the sidewalk. And so the rest of the window is actually under underneath under the ground it would have been which and as you can see there are doorways also and that's that's what we're postulating is that a lot of these buildings that we're looking at the rest of them is actually below ground and i think that a lot of people are they act very incredulous at that like they can't believe that that people believe that but we see that that actually happens and we know that it happens but i, I don't know for some reason the idea just makes some people uncomfortable but again this is these buildings were not built for light, and as you can see, they're not coal shoots either. Now another, and actually I'm gonna leave it on this photo because I'm gonna get into the next reason that people tell me that there are mud flood windows is that they say that it is due to the foundations of the buildings settling. And okay, again, I'm not a builder, and so I'm not gonna to pretend to be an expert on this, but what I will say is that I, I, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me that there would be some settling of foundations for sure there there would be some settling but this much settling of a foundation even if it would happen over you know a more extended period of time that doesn't seem like a very safe foundation to me so while a foundation might settle you know i'm not even going to give an amount just but maybe maybe a foot or so um and i'm sure that people are going to be more than happy to point out if i'm wrong in the comments but you're not going to see something settling this much. And, and if something is settling that much, I would be afraid to be in that building. And as we actually go more into the, the settling of, um, of foundations, this is something that I think also debunks that theory, which again, maybe you might have some windows like that because of a little bit of settling, but we have stories of buildings that are uncovered that are 13, 14 feet underground, windows that extend far, far underground. Now, John Levi, in one of his videos, I was trying to find which one it was because he has a, he has so many great videos. You have to go to his channel. Um, but he has a lot of great videos on Salt Lake City. And in one of them, he actually went there in person and they were doing construction on the temple. And he spoke to someone and, and you could actually see in the video that there were the windows under the ground, like they had taken the ground away and you could see there were windows underground. And when he spoke to a construction worker, I believe that the person working there said that there were at least seven stories below ground under the temple. And I even have to say, what, what kind of an accomplishment would that be? Because it is said that the temple only took 40 years to build in the 1800s. And this is the temple and it, the construction worker said that it does extend down seven stories. So that's that would be something. John Levi, again, go to his channel. You, you've got to see what he's done with, with Salt Lake City. But yeah, I think that that really kind of does away with the whole foundation settling theory. 
Now, the last theory that I'm going to go over today is actually the one that I thought was the most intriguing. And it really had me scratching my head because I thought, huh, this really sounds like it makes sense. Because a couple people have commented that the reason that there are mud flood windows is because when they started putting in sewer pipes in the mid 1800s, late 1800s, that they, instead of digging underneath the, the houses, they kind of made those, made the first floor into a basement and then put the sewer pipes, um, I don't know, and then kind of covered them with dirt. And I thought, all right, well, I'm willing to look into this. So I looked up, I found this article called The Very Not Boring History of Plumbing. And I'll leave a link if you want to read the whole thing. But I just, I was more, most interested in down here in the time area that we're talking about. So what I found was that it said, now this is 1855. Well, I'll just, I have just this highlighted, but I'll read this whole section here. 1855, the first comprehensive sewer system in America. In the mid 1800s, Chicago completed construction of the Illinois and Michigan Canal and reversed the flow of the Chicago River. Two massive plumbing feats that helped transform the city into a national trade hub. During this same period though, the burgeoning city also lost thousands of lives to multiple cholera, typhoid, and dysentery outbreaks. To eliminate the swampy conditions, remember how we talked about that, how a lot of times these famous places are said to be built on swampland. But anyway, to eliminate the swampy conditions that kept making its citizens sick, city engineers laid sewer lines above the thoroughfares and covered them with dirt, elevating the streets by as much as eight feet and literally raising the city out of the muck. By 1855, Chicago had built America's first citywide sewer system. And so, yeah, when I read that, I was floored. I thought, hold on, could this really be the reason that there are so many mud flood windows? To me, this one seemed like it made the most sense out of all of them. So yeah, so if they elevated the streets by as much as eight feet and raised them out of the muck and then covered, like put the sewer lines in and then covered them with dirt, I thought, you know what? A lot of these windows, it does look like it could possibly be eight or so feet of building underneath them. So if we go back to here, we'll go back to this one here. I was thinking, huh, could, could that be what happened? But then, and I think this is something that more people need to do. I think that a lot of times when we, we hear an explanation that sounds plausible, I think that a lot of people will just kind of leave it at that. They'll drop it and they'll say, okay, that's the answer. I've got it all figured out. But once you actually start thinking about the logistics of this, again, it doesn't seem very feasible. So first of all, I did mention this in a comment to of Streets of Tartaria. I know I keep mentioning that channel, but that is one of my favorite channels because he shows so many good, so much good evidence of, of the mud flood windows and the architecture. And he knows so much more about this stuff than I do. But he mentioned that if this were the case, a lot of the sewer pipes would actually be above where the toilets would be in the basement. And that doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Additionally, if you are going to elevate the streets by eight feet and then with now the whole city, now remember this was Chicago, so not, not like a tiny town, and they're going to cover it all with dirt. Where did all that dirt come from, first of all? Second of all, weren't the homeowners or the building owners a little upset at losing part of their house to the underground? But again, I think really the, the best argument is the dirt. Where did it all come from? How much work did that possibly take? How long did that take? How did they do that? And we have to remember that it's not just Chicago where this happened. If you, if, if you are using this as an explanation for mud flood windows, this would have to be all over the world that they elevated everything and put all this dirt on top of everything. All over the world, we're somehow finding all of this dirt and raising all of these cities. And this is why the whole idea in the last video I talked about Seattle 
and underground Seattle and how they claim that they, you know, well, they did. There is an underground city and then there's an above ground city, but I don't believe that it was done on purpose. I believe that there's a good chance there was a mud flood there. And that's why there's two levels of the city, because I just can't see someone pouring, using that much dirt and somehow filling in all of this landmass just to cover pipes. To me, it, it just seems like it would have been much easier for them just to dig because th otherwise that would have been a ridiculously huge undertaking. So anyway, as of right now, I haven't really found what I would consider to be um, a better alternative explanation for mud flood windows. Now, again, I, I mentioned that it could be the case that some are coal shoots. We do know that there are basement windows put in for lights. It, there could be some, a little bit of foundation settling, but overall, it certainly doesn't explain everything that we see. And that's why we're still questioning. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram or you can leave it here. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.